Hey guys, as you know, we here at Public Domain Theater love the movies. We love movies, and you know we love movie podcasts. And now one of the greatest movie podcasts of all time, that's no joke, that's the honest to God's truth, is available right here on the Forever Dog Podcast Network. It's called Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood. This beloved podcast reviews films with leading actors of color and analyzes them in the context of race and Hollywood's diversity issues. And also, it's funny as shit and a pleasure to listen to. Jump in to Black Men Can't Jump today. Jara, James, and John have an incredible back catalog of over 150 movies that you can check out right now. And brand new episodes every Monday featuring discussions about brand new movies like Night School, Black Klansmen, Crazy Rich Asians, Black Panther, whatever the big movie out that weekend is, the guys are on it and you want to be in on the conversations. So movie lovers, culture lovers, politics lovers, comedy lovers, this is your new favorite show. Subscribe to Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts today. And now, on to the show. Forever. Dog. Welcome to Public Domain Theater with Kelly Nugent, Lindsay K. Tai, and guest John Gabris. Reading The Swindler by Ethel M. Dell. Welcome to Public Domain Theater, the podcast of highbrow readings and lowbrow commentary. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katai. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. And we do have a guest. You already heard his name, but he is the co-host of two podcasts, High and Mighty and Raised by TV. We have comedian Sir John Gabris. Oh, hi, Sir. guys. Thank you for, or peoples, thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Thank uh, you for coming on and doing the show. Oh, please. I love please. reading and talking. <laughs> Speaking of loving reading, um, when you were, uh, let's say, post-pubescent, High school? <laughs> High school? Is that? Yeah. Okay. So we're... you're saying, you're asking when I had hair on my genitals. Yeah. Dot, yeah. Dot, the dot, instant dot. that that happened. Yes. The, the, I the remember. very instant. I remember the hearing the noise. The of breach the of the hair. Yeah. What were you reading the moment the first hair? Because you were reading. Popped. Yes. You did tell us that. I yeah. was a big reader as a mm-hmm. child. Less, And then as a New Yorker, I was a big reader. And then as a LA resident, I listened to a lot of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Do way less reading. Um, I, uh, what was I reading? I, I, when I was 13, we moved houses. Not that I was saying I had a full bush at 13 or anything, but nice. I am a half Italian and nice. the bottom half. We moved to, uh, we moved to a new town and in my bedroom, that was going to be my, I didn't want to leave my town cause I had friends and I was in sixth grade and it's like, who wants to move at that right, age? Right. Um, no but in the new place, my parents were selling me on because the house had an extension built on the uh, second floor, that I would have the master bedroom. So cool. I had like this big bedroom. Oh. And I was the oldest of the three boys. So it was like, that's what they were using to sell. My brothers were younger. They would adapt better. What, that's where were your parents cell? staying? Uh, we, like... It had a second floor of this house, but this master bedroom was like the uh, original. Oh. I used to share a room with my brother in my, in my old Upgrade. house. So my parents, that's how they were selling me. on the, And I moved in and the uh, only thing in the room, that had a big, big ass like double door closet, and nothing was in the room. They had taken everything mm-hmm. with them except for one thing: a jacketless copy of Stephen King's The Stand. Oh my god, that's amazing! That is my favorite Stephen King book. Oh my, yeah, I like The Long Walk, even though it's super short. Um, mm. It's a huge. Irony. It's a huge. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Maybe oh, that's what whoa. I like about it. The meta. <laughs> the meta-ness of it. But uh, the book was so huge, and I was a little nerd, and I was also moving into a new town, so I knew I was going to have no friends and minimal stuff to do. So I was like, this is going to be my fucking project, and I like chugged the stand. Dude. So it was like a, full, um, a summer and then some, like of me just like reading in my car, get, in my car, in my parents' car, <laughs> uh, being like nauseous and like looking yes. down and yes. stuff like that. I like, remember that, the ch- like chugging through, like because you wanted to finish reading it, but you were so sick reading in the yeah. car. <laughs> and that would have been the unabridged re-release in the 90s, wouldn't it? It was huge, yeah. Fucking giant. It's a cute. Yeah. Yeah. It might have been It might have been an earlier one. I don't know. It would. This would be 94 or 95 when I found the book. I don't know how. Almost it certainly would, yeah. re-release yeah. then, yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I've always read big books and thought that was like a cool thing because I read so much. I read 
I read and still do read so much fantasy. Mm. So it's always like, you know, 10,000 pages, oh, eight, yeah. eight books, you know, mm-hmm. like, but the I don't entire mind that history shit. of a, yeah. Robert Jordan's the wheel of time is like, I'm like five books yeah. in and people are like, it gets really good at book eight. And I'm like, I'm so fucking, I I'm like the time I spent reading this, I should have written something or read, read yeah. something else or like did the dishes. <laughs> um, when you, uh, said that there was like only one thing in that room when you got in there it made me i think i've shared this story on the show but you know it's new to me it's new to you and the guest is who matters um so uh taryn killam's dad used to like live under in like a crawl space under your house yeah under my house isn't that weird (laughs) wait isn't that weird? For real? No, that for wasn't real. the this joke. Is, this is not. This is not a joke. So I Did live in a. Did he raise Taryn Killam there? No, I don't understand. So Kobe Smolders used to own my house. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I would like send checks to her, and I was like, "Why am I even doing this? You have all this Marvel money. Who cares? I could not send this to you. You wouldn't even know. Whatever." But so they like let Tar- Taryn's dad like live in this little. Oh, like the place you are now. Yeah. Okay. I thought you meant growing up, and I was like. The timeline does not no, work. No, 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 no. It's my house. My house right now, and okay. it was like maybe like eight years ago. Okay. Um, and the the studio down there is not. It's like nothing. Great. No, it's like behind the garage. Anyway, w- so they were like, "You got to leave." He, they kicked him out. He left <laughs> like very um, uh, passive aggressively. Like he would like put all of his stuff like on like blocking the garage, and then be like, well, I guess I got to move out and like make this big fuss about it. Finally, after all of this stuff is gone, there's only one thing in the studio, and it's a, one of those cube TVs with a v, v, uh, VHS player. Right. A TV-VCR combo. Yeah. TV-VCR combo. I loved it. And a box of VHSs. Unmarked. What were the VHSs? I don't know. I didn't watch didn't them. I was watch scared. Them? I was scared. What if it was something scary? <laughs> what if it was like The Ring or something, or like like something gross? Or... Uh, yeah, I was about to say. Like, I, I think we're looking more at gross than yeah. scary. Yeah, and I mean, like, like and I would have done it a few, anyway. A few things on VHS anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's scary. Though. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not. And and here's the thing. I don't get like grossed out easily, but I was like, something bad is on those. I can't. I can't watch these. Um, so that was my Taryn Killam's dad used to live under my house story. Um, we all have one. We all yeah. have one. Um, I'm not going to tell the mine. This is theme of this podcast. We're going to tell <laughs> SNL cast members' fathers that live in our crawl space. I had yeah. Charles Rocket's uncle stay in my garage for a little while. Aw, uh, R.I.P. Mm, um, so we're reading a story right now by Ethel M. Dell. Do we know anything about this person? Is I do anyone? not. Personally, do I not. do not. Do you know anything? Yeah, I know a bunch of stuff. Okay. <laughs> Say it all. No, I have no Say it all idea. Right Get now. out like a binder. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'm like, oh, Ethel Dell? <laughs> I've read everything by her. No, I have never heard the name. Okay. Is, is she a, a, a writer of note? Like, would we have no idea? No. I guess yeah. we're about I mean, to find out. Probably not. Well, last time we thought it was some Midwestern nobody, and then she turned out to be like, a member of the Algonquin Round Table set. Yeah, and like and she has made like many movies. Awesome. She was dope as shit. We'll see if Ethel measures up. Mm. Okay. So she's when do you think she was born? Lindsay's pretty good at this. She usually can get mm. at least two of the digits right. <laughs> Which is, you always say that, but that's like not that good. It's not that hard. Of the year uh, or the date? Like, like it just doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. I'm, I'm just guessing one the year. six five four two. <laughs> How many digits did I Probably get? Probably two of them. <laughs> I'll say 18, um, going based off the name, 1894. You were very close. You were very off because yours was like a thousand years in the future. Yes. <laughs> or maybe 10,000 well, years in the future. I, okay. I don't fully understand the premise of your guys' podcast. It, we're reading public domain from the future. <laughs> from now. the future. Yeah, because yeah, copyright doesn't exist in the future. <laughs> she was born in 1881. Very close. Oh, wow. Very, very close. Uh, when do you think she died? She yes, still today. hasn't. She's still alive my, today. My guess is she's still writing. <laughs> my, my guess was yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. 9 11, 2001. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> she had but no just luck. like. She made it to 110 and then died in the towers. She's Sorry, like, I got to see those towers <laughs> <laughs> before like, I die. Today's the day. I'm going to go out. I'm going to get out there. Uh, 1939. Oh. Okay. So she's a British writer. That was early. That is early. Wait, 81, 91. I think living to oh, 50 one. in the. Or in the nineteen hundred, in the 
1800 in the 19th century. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah she's like 50 something. That took me yeah. that long to figure yeah. out she was like 50 something. I didn't even want to try. It took me that no. long to figure out she was 50 something. <laughs> 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 so you got one digit. I got one. <laughs> and I, I didn't one. even try. That's how yeah. I never fail. <laughs> um, so she is a British writer, or was a British writer, of over 30 popular romance novels and several short stories. Hmm. She's born. She was born in Streatham. I'm not sure how to say that. A suburb of London. Her family was middle class. She lives a comfortable life. She was very shy. She was very quiet. She began to write stories while very young, and many of them were published in popular magazines. Oh. oh. Popular oh. ones. Okay. Beneath her shy exterior, she had a passionate heart, and most of her stories were stories of love and desire. Oh, a freak in set, the sheets. Set in <laughs> India and other British colonial possessions. <laughs> Interesting. Um, they were considered to be very racy stories. Her cousins would pull out pencils and try to count up the number of times she used the words passion, tremble, can't, and thrill. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. The four sexiest words. I think George Carlin did yeah. a bit about mm-hmm. those four words. <laughs> <laughs> Um, while readers adored Ethel's novels, critics hated them with a passion, but she didn't care what critics thought. You she considered girl. herself a good storyteller. Nothing more, nothing less. She continues to write novels for a number of years. She made quite a lot of money from 20,000 pounds to 30,000 pounds a year, but remained quiet and almost pathologically shy. That's about $600,000 to $700,000 a year adjusted for inflation. Dang, girl. In 1922, when she's 40 years old, she marries a soldier, Lieutenant Colonel Gerald Tahordin Savage. Sure. Their, Great name. General yeah. Savage? General Savage. Oh, <laughs> C- Colonel Savage. Colonel Savage. Oh. Even better. Oh. Oh. The marriage is happy. Oh. Colonel Savage resigns his Twist. commission on his marriage, and Ethel became the support of the family. Her husband devoted himself to her and fiercely guarded her privacy. Dang. They, pictures of Ethel are very rare. She was never interviewed by the press. She died of cancer on September 19th, 1939, at age 58. Wow. Wow. Mm. So close to September 11th. So close to <laughs> September 11th. I was close. Yeah, so you were 58 close. 58 is fucking a wonderful age to live to. Mm-hmm. That's shy I think, people. and she's like rich, and she has this husband that's like, my wife wants privacy, leave her alone, I will protect her fiercely. Colonel I'm Colonel Sa- Savage. Colonel, Colonel Savage. Savage. It sounds fucking like a character from one of her romance novels. That must be what attracted her. Colonel Savage. <laughs> Well, isn't there Colonel like an old Savage, pulp comic like Doc Savage or something like that too? I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm actually sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. Yeah. No, I'm sure. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the name of this? <laughs> <laughs> the Swindler. Swindler. Oh, is it gonna? I hope it's sexy. I'm I, so I fucking think. I, I hope. How could it not be? Here's the thing. Um, so Brett didn't know that I was coming in to record today. And then, so he was like, oh, I was just saying that like, it would be too bad if you weren't here because this is such a you story. And I was like, is this, interesting. Is this Brett? Is this cause this is like, <laughs> is this cause this is like, like porn? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, cause he knows my past life fanfic. narrating erotica. Oh, maybe the fanfic thing. Yeah. You, yeah. you have spoken many a time about reading like erotic Harry Potter fan fiction. Yeah. So oh. I think fair. Also, this was listener submitted. So thank listener you for submitted. Doing that. So if you're wondering, hey, how do I put in my submission? You should follow us on Twitter at Public Domain Pod, and you can go to the pinned tweet and fill out that form to give us some ideas. Don't do anything too long, or else we'll um, not read it. Okay. <laughs> um, ready? Guideline. When you come to reflect that there are only a few planks between you and the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, it makes you feel sort of pensive. Hmm. I beg your pardon. What? <laughs> The stranger smoking his cigarette. The reveal that she's talking. To yeah. <laughs> it was like a real I'm fast sorry, twist. I'm sorry. Did you say something about the planks? Oh, was that out loud? <laughs> the stranger smoking his cigarette in the lee of the deck cabins turned his head sharply in the direction of the voice. Yeah, he did. He encountered the wide, unembarrassed gaze what? of a girl's gray eyes. Oh wide gaze? Mm. People she, love saying wide gaze, but I don't know what that means. Yeah, like maybe just like that? like yeah, very well, like large writers, eyes? like oh, oh yeah. the wide gaze, oh, or that... everybody has like gray eyes or green eyes. <laughs> you find very few of those. Yeah, green or gray eyes with red or auburn hair. Mm-hmm. Um, he encountered blah blah blah. She had evidently just come up on deck. I beg yours, she rejoined composedly. Mm-hmm. I thought at first you were someone else. He shrugged his shoulders and turned away. Who? Quite obviously, he was not disposed to be sociable upon so slender an introduction. The girl, however, made no move to retreat. She stood thoughtfully, tapping on the boards with the point of her shoe. 
Ethel makes like writes like shoegazing like Indian <laughs> ro- romance. Yeah. It's like the fucking uh, Garden State. It's yeah. like two shy weirdos <laughs> meeting on a uh, boat deck. Oh, Mumbling. Is this how she and her husband met? Um, Maybe. Colonel Savage. He probably was like <laughs> Colonel Savage. <laughs> I'm Colonel Savage. <laughs> uh, were you talking to me? Sorry. <laughs> Too thin an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> were you playing cards last night down at the saloon? She asked presently. I was looking on. He threw the words over his shoulder, not troubling to turn. The this guy girl is so fucking chill. The girl shivered. The morning air was damp and chill. Oh shit! Oh. I'm about to be damp and chill. <laughs> you do a good deal of that, Mister. My house for Netflix. Yeah. Damp. <laughs> oh, uh, what? Clammy. <laughs> Sorry, I. Uh, it's very musty in my home, and I have a mold problem. Yeah, I have an indoor pool. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to do about it. <laughs> you do a good deal of that, Mister. Mister. She paused suggestively, but the man would not fill in the blank. He smoked on in silence. <laughs> the vessel was rolling somewhat heavily, and the splash of the drifting foam reached them occasionally where they stood. There were no other ladies in sight. Suddenly, the clear American voice broke through the man's barrier of silence. Who is talking? Oh, her. <laughs> I know quite well what you are, Who you know. Talking? You may just as well tell me your name as leave, as leave me to find it out for myself. He looked at her then for the first time, keenly even critically. His clean-shaven mouth wore a very curious expression. Uh, I got a big day tonight. Better shave my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) You make sure you fucking buzz your teeth. That's what manscaping is, is when you fucking shave your lips down. (laughs) Back in the day, they were a little more stringent about that. Because you don't treat a lady Mm -hmm. unless you treat her right. My name is West, he said after a moment. She nodded briskly. Your professional name, I suppose. You are a professional, of course. His eyes In continued. <laughs> Love. His eyes continued to watch her narrowly. They were blue eyes, piercingly, icily blue. Why, of course, if one may ask. She laughed a light, sweet laugh, <laughs> inexpressibly gay. Cynthia Mortimer. Imagine they just reveal a third person sitting there going like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? What is this conversation? Hey, it's just like hey, one guy gray that's like. gray eyes, yo, blue <laughs> eyes, let's get together for fuck's sake. You want to uh, narrow that gaze or something already? <laughs> if we're doing introductions, I'm Steven. <laughs> Nobody asked you. Hi, West, I'm Steven. <laughs> Steven, get out of here. <laughs> Steven Savage? All right, you're welcome, man. <laughs> Cynthia Mortimer could be charmingly inconsequent when she chose. I don't think you're a bit clever, you know, she said. I knew what you were directly when I saw you standing by the gangway watching the people coming on board. You looked really professional then, just as if you didn't care a red cent whether you caught your man or not. I knew you did care, though, and I was ready to dance when I knew you hadn't got him. Think you'll track him down on our side? Is he a a spy? Oh, no, he's a cop, right? Yeah, he seems like a... He's a... Pinkerton. Oh, Ooh, shit. Yeah. Pinkerton, Pinkertons? Pinkertons on ships. That's what I was trying to say. Pinkerships. Pinkerships. West turned his eyes once more upon the heaving gray water, carelessly flicking the ash from his cigarette. I don't think, he said briefly. I know. Ooh, I'm fucking hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that's not what this podcast is about, but I can't. Uh, I'm just no, being real. Many no, of these we stories are. have to mop the floor. Yeah, right there now. was <laughs> one story where it was like H.G. Wells wanted to fuck a room. Yeah, he was like, the room was playing teasy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the wide eyes opened wider, but they gathered no information from the unresponsive profile that smoked the cigarette. They began to fill her face. <laughs> her eyes continued to grow. As he said, two in the Pinkerton, one in the Stinkerton. <laughs> you know where Mr. Nat Verney is? She breathed, almost in a whisper. You don't say. Then you weren't really watching out for him at the gangway. He jerked up his head with an enigmatical laugh. Ha ha! My <laughs> methods are not so simple as that, he said. Ooh, West. Complicated. Cynthia joined quite generously in his laugh, notwithstanding its hard note of ridicule. She had become keenly interested in this man, in spite of, possibly in consequence of, the rebuffs he so unsparingly administered. Yeah, hard oh, to this get. Is, this oh. is some, like, sparring. Yeah, this is some yeah, old this is some school, Nancy Myers, like, like let's butt Nancy heads for a couple Myers. minutes, mm-hmm. and then holy shit, we're both so stubborn. Should could wow. we make this work? Mm-hmm. This is some real like Meryl Streep, <laughs> Jack Nicholson, and yeah. like a white kitchen in the Hamptons uh, oh. kind of Nancy Myers. Fuck it. This is like even. My- 
She was not accustomed to rebuffs, this girl with her delicate flower-like beauty. (laughs) They held for her something of the charm of novelty and abashed her not at all. I think this woman invented modern erotica. Yeah. This yeah, is the this plot is of like every, every stupid yeah. erotica book. It's like they hate each other, but then all of a sudden they He's fuck Gerard it. Butler. She's <laughs> Catherine Heigl. They have jobs that are huge and it doesn't matter. <laughs> And They're never at work. <laughs> they never work. <laughs> Everyone in couples and rom- rom-coms has insane jobs. <laughs> I do marketing for dogs. Me, I invent toothbrushes. <laughs> now, yeah, let's see if we can come work together. I'm only at work for five minutes at a time to talk to my friends, <laughs> yeah. the person of color and the gay person. <laughs> <laughs> they work in this office, so I have to come here. Because <laughs> I have to work. And you really think you'll catch him? She questioned, a note of honest regret in her voice. Don't you want him to be caught? He pitched his cigarette overboard and turned to her with less of... Litterer! Ocean litterer, the worst kind of littering. Global warming. (laughs) Not yet. They're they're still good. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. They don't 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 even have a fucking car, dude. They're on a boat. Oh, yeah. (laughs) They're on a barge. And turned to her with less of churlishness in his bearing. She met his eyes quite frankly. I should just love him to get away, she declared with kindling eyes. Oh, I know. He's a regular sharper, and he's swindled heaps of people. I'm one of them, so I know a little bit about it. Twist. He swindled me out of $500, and I can tell you I was mad at first. But But it was hot every second of it. (sighs) But now that he's flying from justice, I'm game enough to want him to get away. I suppose my sympathies generally lie with the hair, Mr. West. I'm sorry if it annoys you, but I was created that way. What a little instigator. She's like, I know how to pick this guy up. I'm going to root for the criminal <laughs> to his face. That wronged me. It's also like, that is some old I'm school trying sh- to be a manic pixie dream girl. Look at my personality. Mm-hmm. I have so much of it. It is like an old school thing, too, to be like, uh, oh, the man you hate. I find him kind of charming. Yep. And yeah. like, oh, West is getting angry. Because then he's like kind of jealous too. Right. Mm-hmm. It works. That is goat. Girl. I hate this bitch. West <laughs> was <laughs> frowning. She's very annoying. <laughs> Mortimer. Oh, but he smiled with some cynicism over her last remarks. Besides, she continued, I couldn't help admiring him. He has a regular genius for swindling that man. You'll agree with me there? A sudden he- heavy roll of the vessel pitched her forward before he could reply. Oh, yeah. no. He caught her around the waist, saving her from a headlong fall, and she clung to him, laughing like a child at the mishap. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll have to go below, she decided regretfully. I but, think we'll both have to go below. Nice. Yeah. But you've been good to me, and I'm glad I spoke. I've always been somewhat prejudiced against detectives till today. My cousin Archie, you saw him in the card room last night. Vowed you were nothing half so interesting. Everyone in my family is a criminal. <laughs> Why is it, I wonder, that detectives always look like journalists? Huh? She, she looked at him with eyes of friendly criticism. You didn't deceive me, you see. But then, ingeniously, I'm clever in some ways, much more clever than you'd think. Now, you won't cut me next time we meet, will you? Because perhaps I'm going to ask you to do something for me. What did you want me to do? The man's voice was hard, his eyes cold as steel, but his question had in it a shade, just a shade, of something warmer than mere curiosity. Whoa. Dang! What does she want him to do? Is she the swindler? (laughs) Oh, shit. She's fucking rubbing it right in his face. If it's her cousin Archie, I'm going to be pissed. That's so boring. It's I don't so care boring. about Archie. It's so I boring. I want never to see him. Well, guess what? He's going to come up right now. No! Um, hey, y'all. It's me, Archie. <laughs> I was just swimming next to the boat. Oh, hey, Steven. You up here? Did you know there's fish in there? <laughs> I found a fish. Thank you, Archie. <laughs> Go back to the card room. <laughs> she took him into her confidence without an instant's hesitation. My cousin Archie, you may have noticed you were looking on last night. He's a very careless player and headstrong, too. But he can't afford to lose any, and I don't want him to come to grief. You see, I'm rather fond of him. Well? The man's brows were drawn down over his eyes. His expression was not encouraging. Well, she proceeded, undismayed, I saw you looking on, and you looked as if you knew a few things. So I thought you'd be a safe person to ask. I can't look after him. And his mother, well, she's worse than useless. But a man, a real strong man like you, is different. If I were to introduce you, couldn't you look after him a bit? Just till we get across. Like, hey, Wait, she's Pinkerton. swindling him. She's yeah, swindling him. she's totally no, I'm liking swindling. This. I'm liking She this. might be the criminal and keeps like going like, oh, did you catch your man yet? Mm-hmm. Is oh, that yeah. man cut? It's Do like you Finkel have him? Yeah. Mm. 
With much simplicity, she made her request, but there was a tinge of anxiety in her eyes. Certainly West, staring steadily forth over the gray waste of tumbling waters, looked sufficiently forbidding. After a few seconds of silence, he flung an abrupt question. Why don't you ask someone else? <laughs> and then he sailed overboard. <laughs> <laughs> he dove overboard Wait, and turned into a dolphin. <laughs> there story. is no one else, she answered. No one else? <laughs> He made a gesture of impatient, impatient incredulity. There are four Ooh. people on this boat. Us, Stephen, and Archie. <laughs> and Stephen's like, hi! <laughs> Not you, Stephen! <laughs> no one that I can trust, she explained. And you trust me? Of course I do. Why? Again, he looked at her <laughs> with I'm a... I'm a dummy. <laughs> Again, he looked at her with a piercing scrutiny. His eyes held a savage... Almost a threatening expression. Savage. Savage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Little shout out to the hubs. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, happy this one's like, for you. A hubby reference in all of their stories. <laughs> no, it's just something sweet I do. So when he reads it, while he's cranking <laughs> off to the erotic eye, like, <laughs> he likes to see his own name as he reaches climax. <laughs> mm, so private. <laughs> like, you're so savage. fucking private. Who's this West motherfucker? <laughs> oh, savage. Savage. <laughs> that's me. I'm Colonel Mel in the Navy. <laughs> in the Navy. <laughs> Fucking marriage is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but the girl only laughed, lightly and confidently. Again. She Why? went from laughing like a child to, to laughing confidently. Lightly. She's growing. She's, <laughs> oh. She is such she is such a player. She is she a coquette, if ever there was one. Coquette. Coquette. Okay. I, 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 I did hear cokehead. Cokehead. <laughs> Co she was probably doing medicinal Coquette. cocaine at this point. Oh, like totally. Like pink yeah. powders. Yeah. She's like, Some laudanum. <laughs> Um, but the girl only laughed lightly and confidently. Why? Oh, just because you're trustworthy, I guess. I can't think of any other reason. West's look relaxed, became abstracted, and finally fell away from her. You appear to be a lady of some discernment, he observed dryly. She proffered her hand impulsively, her eyes dancing. My, that's the first pretty thing you've said to me, she declared flippantly. I just like you, Mr. West. West was feeling for his cigarette case. He gave her his hand without looking at her, as if her approbation did not greatly gratify him. Oh, he's playing it cool. Mm. He's got like a big old boner. He's like <laughs> grabbing a dictionary and putting it in front of it. He's like, let me see if I can find my cigarette case. He's like patting himself down. He's a visible erection. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's somewhere around here. She's like trying not to look. She's Steven's just like, like staring at his burner. <laughs> and she's like, the penis. <laughs> when she was gone, he moved away along the windswept deck with his collar up to his ears and his head bent to the gale. His conversation with the American girl had not apparently made him feel any more sociably inclined towards his fellow passengers. Certainly, as Cynthia had declared, young Archibald Bathurst was an exceedingly reckless player. Oh, that's her cousin. Got mm -hmm. it. He lacked the judgment and the cool brain essential to a good card player, with the result that he lost much more often than he won. But notwithstanding this fact, he had a passion for cards which no amount of defeat could abate. Oh, a passion. passion. Circle that with a pencil. Uh, twice in one sentence which he never failed to indulge whenever an opportunity presented itself. At the very moment when his cousin was making her petition on his behalf to the surly Englishman on deck. Oh, I did not know he was English. I probably shouldn't have known that. Oh, she's the American. Yeah. yeah he's, he's English. English. Yeah. Oh, I just assumed, you know, because all ladies be British. <laughs> <laughs> that Girls is are British stereotype. and American. And I'm very <laughs> insulted by that. We are not all British. Two things I believe. Dogs are boys. Cats are girls. <laughs> and women are British. <laughs> It's more often true than it's not. <laughs> I he, guess. I mean, the ster it's a stereotype for a reason, but I just don't appreciate stereotypes it. Stereotypes come from somewhere. <laughs> what a cool thing to always say. <laughs> like, like, if you find yourself saying that a lot, yeah. you're like, oh, maybe I can fucking yeah. buckle down here. Yeah. You're my part of the problem. <laughs> At the, uh, he was seated in the saloon with three or four men older than himself. Playing and losing, playing and losing, with an almost unvarying monotony, yet with a feverish relish that had in it something tragic. He was only three and twenty, and as he was wont to they remark, fucking love phrasing it that way. Mm -hmm. Every age is like he was only three. You're like, ooh, ooh and, and twenty. 20. Uh, I thought he was like <laughs> a prodigy, twenty-three year old. <laughs> there was a three-year-old cop <laughs> that a woman and, and, was interested in, <laughs> and he was smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Much better. You like, smoked younger then. There's something fresh about you <laughs> <laughs> and that's why the story is called baby cop <laughs> um and as he was wont to remark ill luck dogged him persistently at every turn he never blamed himself when rash speculations failed and he never profited by bitter experience simply never blamed himself sounds like he's to blame i think he's like quick gambling you're bad at he it. Has an addiction simply he was by Wait, nature what's he addicted to 
cards. Cards. This is the cousin, oh. Archibald. Oh, we're on Archibald. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm still thinking West. No, no, no. So this yeah. is Archibald. He's sucking at cards, but he's still doing it. Archibald Bathurst. Bathurst. Yes. Simply, he was by nature a spendthrift, high-spirited, impulsive, weak, with little thought for the future and none at all for the past. Wherever he went, he was popular. His gaiety and spontaneity won him favor. Man, but that must be nice never to think about the past or future. No. Just live in the moment. Live Can in you the imagine moment. that? Yeah. I think Archibald ba- uh, Bathurst needs to have like a Tony Robbins-esque seminar because I would yeah. go to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah totally, totally. I want to know how to live that way. No inner monologue. <laughs> well, here's the problem. <laughs> No one took him very seriously. Oh, oh, shit. No one ever dreamed that his ill luck was a cause for anything but mirth. But he would forget it the second he noticed yeah. it. He, he has like no object permanence. He's like a yeah, cat. He, he like lives a moment to moment memento. <laughs> <laughs> He's living uh, 50 first dates every minute. Yeah. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Everlane. There are a lot of things I like about Everlane. There is the ethics of Everlane. I would not buy a t-shirt for $50 if I knew it only cost $7 to make. Everlane makes it so you never overpay for quality clothes. The other thing I like is that they specialize in the type of clothes that I like to wear, which is like cool, high quality, like oversized tops and then I walk around with that and like a baseball cap on and I look like I'm a famous person that in, when I'm just being comfortable and cool. But people will see me in like my cool like box tee and my baseball cap and then I'll put sunglasses on and it's like I'm famous. Don't talk to me. I'm very busy right now. So if you want to live the don't talk to me, I'm famous lifestyle, Everlane is there for you. They make only premium essentials using the finest materials without traditional markups. And they tell you their real costs, so you know you're never overpaying. They also want you to know what you're paying for and why. They're radically transparent about every step in their process, from the materials they use to the ethical factories they work with. And because Everlane sells directly to you, their prices are 30 to 50% lower than traditional retailers. Everlane's clothes look better, cost less, and last longer. Essentials like their Cotton Crew t-shirt are exactly what they should be. Simple, stylish, and made from quality materials. If you're like, I want to dress like Kelly, here are my favorite items that I enjoy from their website. I enjoy a square toe Chelsea boot in cedar, the cotton collarless belted shirt dress in red slash white stripe. I like the linen shirt dress in indigo. I like the cotton crew in brick lilac white stripe, the straight leg crop in golden brown, the clean silk shell in pale pink, the renew long puffer in brick. The authentic stretch high-rise skinny ankle jean in washed black. The cashmere rib v-neck in black. The cashmere shrunken sweatshirt in dark gray Donegal. I enjoy all of their jeans. They've got high-rise skinnies, mid-rises, modern boyfriend. Their clothes are amazing. They're timeless essentials. No frills, just quality. And right now, you can check out our personalized collection at everlane.com slash public. Plus, you'll get free shipping on your first order. That's everlane.com slash public. E-V-E-R-L-A-N-E dot com slash public. And now back to the show. Oh. It's my turn. Switching. The pass off. Mm -hmm. A good deal of money had changed hands when the party separated to dine. But though young Bathurst was as usual a loser, he displayed no depression. Only as he squandered away his to his cabin, he flung a laughing challenge to those who remained. Oh, are they on a gambling boat? I think they are. And he was just like, ha chase me. <laughs> I'm going to my room. Archibald, out. <laughs> Wee. Mm-hmm. See if I don't turn the tables presently. They laughed with him, pursuing him with chaff till he was out of hearing. Huh? Pursuing with chaff? chaff. Chafe. It says chaff. I know it's not chafe. <laughs> that's... that's that's uh, That was the phrase back then for half a boner. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they all yeah, had half yeah. chubs. They were pursuing They're all him half with chaff. Chaffed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, dude. I'm chaffed up. Let's get him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, dude. Half. I don't know about you, but this game, game of cards got me all chaffed up. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway hard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The boy was a game youngster, and he knew how to lose. Moreover, it was generally believed that he could afford to pay for his pleasures. But a man who met him suddenly outside his cabin read something other than indifference upon his flushed face. He only saw him for an instant. The next, Archie had swung past and was gone, a clanging door shutting him from sight. When the little knot of card players reassembled after dinner, their number was augmented. A short, broad-shouldered man, clean-shaven with piercing blue eyes. Oh, this is the guy. That's gotta be West. That's West. It's That's West. West. That's He's West. watching him. She Shit. tricked him. She got him. She got him. 
She got him good. Mm-hmm. She set she set him up. She set up Archibald, right? Mm-hmm. She kind of like hinted at him being around. And now, She's a patsy. I she's feel setting like. everybody. Yeah, up. now He's West is going to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh shit, oh, Cynthia oh, shit. Mortimer. You know it, Mortimer. <laughs> Mortimer. <laughs> Mortimer. You she naughty. She shall not be named. Naughty Mortimer. Mortimer. Piercing blue eyes had scraped acquaintance with one of them and scraped. had accepted an invitation to join the play. Some surprise was felt among the rest, for this man had till then been disposed to hold aloof from his fellow passengers, preferring a solitary cigarette to any amusements that might be going forward. Yeah, Hello He wants West. to play now, but he didn't want to play before. Dude, <laughs> something's Whoa. up with this guy. He like used to like just do cigarettes, and now he wants to play cards. No, he wants to do cards. <laughs> it's crazy how like somebody's doing one thing, but then they might not be doing that forever. Yeah, it's kind of bullshit, guys. <laughs> Archibald, do you know this guy? <laughs> a New York man named Rudd muttered to his neighbor that the fellow might be all right, but he had the eyes of a sharper. The neighbor's mm. response murmured the word private detective, and Rudd was oh. relieved. Archie Bathurst was last to arrive. Why would he be relieved by that? Because I think oh, a sharper is not a crook. He's not a crook. Like, yeah. not a crook. Cool. I'm not a crook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Nixon. <laughs> Archie. He's American. <laughs> no, he's, no he's, not. he's not. He's British. No, Cynthia. he's New York, that guy. Oh, Rudd. R- R- oh, R- R- Rudd. Yeah. yeah, I'm R- sorry. He, Rudd is... Uh, the New York man New is New York. named Rudd. The I'm British a New York man, is- man. Hello, it's me, Mr. New York man on the riverboat. <laughs> I'm a Navy man. <laughs> Archie Bathurst was last to arrive and dropped into the place he had occupied all the afternoon. He was immediately facing the stranger, whom he favored with a brief and somewhat disparaging stare before settling down to play. The game was a pure gamble. They played swiftly and in silence. Wes seemed to take <laughs> <Quiet>. the <laughs> tight, tight, yeah. tight, tight, tight. Quick wow. and quiet, like the way I fuck. <laughs> <laughs> silence. So both Shut partners, up. dead silence, <laughs> speed, and completion is all. I look at this way. <laughs> Wes seemed to take but slight interest in the issue. But he won steadily and surely. Young Bathurst playing feverishly, lost and lost and lost again. The fortunes of the other four players varied, but always the newcomer won his ventures. The evening was half over when Archie suddenly and loudly, oh, if you want to know, Joss Whedon just tweeted, loudly Why demanded. Why is Twitter <laughs> telling me this? Twitter emails me to tell me that Joss Whedon tweeted. I don't even follow Joss Whedon. I think something popped down. I didn't fully oh, read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to, so I didn't Sorry, I emailed it. you. <laughs> you're like, I just saw this cool tweet. I'm sorry, I was, I'm not paying attention. What were you reading? I, I look over like, and you're both on your phones and I'm holding I'm Kelly. Your and I'm phone. like, what? <laughs> we're both reading Joss Whedon's Twitter. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, trouble Fire again. Mm. <laughs> Brown coat. Mm-hmm. The evening was half over when Archie suddenly and loudly demanded higher stakes. Oh my! To turn God. his luck as he he looks like it. Eddie Redmayne to me in my mind. I don't know why. Huh. I don't oh, know Archibald? why. Yeah, I don't okay. know why. Yeah. Who do you think this? Uh, who does West look like to you? West. I've been this whole time been thinking Dominic West, and then when they added <laughs> steely blue eyes, it oh, worked for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that does he's work. British. Yeah, yeah, that works. Or he's Irish. Whatever. He's British. Whatever. It's UK. fine. <laughs> he's not American. He and then American. the American. That's all that matters to me. Get your ass in the fucking caravan. <laughs> <laughs> You're either American, a commie, or not that. So what I, is what is the American girl? I think she's in my head. She's Emily Mortimer. <laughs> her name is Cynthia Mortimer. I'm not, as you say, imaginative. <laughs> First idea, best idea. Yeah, and Archibald Bathurst being Eddie Redmayne, I'm on board. Okay, with. great. And then Rudd is Paul Rudd, <laughs> <laughs> slapping the bass. I'm from New York. Let's play poker. <laughs> what fun casting! <laughs> it's really one to one. Double them if you like, said West. Hmm. Rudd looked at him with a distrustful eye and said nothing. The other players were disposed to accede to the boy's vehement request, and after a little discussion, the matter was settled to his satisfaction. The game was resumed at higher points. Some onlookers had drawn round the table, sensing excitement. Eddie Redmayne, sitting with his mm, back to nice. the wall, was playing with headlong recklessness. Yeah, For he's a like while, sweaty. he continued to lose, and then suddenly and most unexpectedly... <gasps> He began to win. <gasps> oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, dog. Archibald Bathurst, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A most rash speculation resulted in his favor. And from that moment, it seemed that his luck had turned. Hmm. Once or twice he lost, but these occasions were outbalanced by several 
brilliant coups. Wait, can I just make a guess that at some point West is going to like grab Archibald's wrist and like flip it over and there's going to be like a hit? You know, like, yeah, I just picture maybe. that trope from a movie where yeah. it's like, all right. Um, and he's yeah. like, what? This? Uh, yeah. these and then like a million cards. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Whoops, my phone dropped. <laughs> it seemed that he and West were to divide the honors, for West looked scarcely varied, and Rudd continued to look at him askance. But the greater part of an hour, young Bathurst won was scarcely a break, till the spectators began to chaff him upon his outrageous success. This is all this chaffing. Huh. So there, oh, there, I think chaffing is like chiding. And yeah, like, like, like kind of like, hey, hey, Giving buddy. him shit. Yeah. 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 But they also busting balls. Yeah. In, in, you know, Rudd, if he's from New York, he knows about <laughs> busting balls. <laughs> Incidentally, they all have <laughs> balls for a second. Uh, Boston balls. Everyone from New York knows about you know. Boston <laughs> balls. <laughs> Unrelated, yeah, they all have half chubs. <laughs> you better stop, one man warned him. She's a fickle jade, you know, Bathurst. Take too much for granted and she'll desert you. Man, but they Bathurst, mean. Yeah. Let him win. That's your cousin. Right, is he talking shit about That's Mortimer? Everyone's cousin. Uh. Wait, they're all yeah, they're all cousins. It's a cousin's everyone's boat. Cousin. Oh, it's a cousin cruise. Yeah, cousin cruise. <laughs> you know, cousin cruise. Those are so fun. Mm-hmm. Don't fuck anyone because <laughs> remember you're all cousins. It's be easy to forget. Forget. That's exactly what it's for. <laughs> and watch out for West's eyes; they're piercing. <laughs> and we've done too many stitches on this boat. <laughs> also, have you seen the wire? <laughs> <laughs> But Bathurst did not seem to hear. He played with lowered eyes and twitching mouth, and his hands shook perceptibly. Who's shaking? West uh, or Archie? Redmayne. Redmayne. Oh, he's shaking. Oh. I bet you his like cravat so thing red-headed. is open. It's all part of the gag, though. Yeah, he's. It's mm-hmm. so fake. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's doing like the sting where you like slap liquor on your neck mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know this. I know this game. The gambler's lust was upon him. Nice. He'll go on all night. Murmured the onlookers. But the prophecy was not to be fulfilled. It was a very small thing that stemmed the racing current of the boy's success. No more than a slight click audible only to a few. And the tinkle of something falling. Uh Uh-oh. What? But in an instant, swift as a thunderbolt, the wings of tragedy swept down upon the little party gathered about the table. What happened? I think it's that cheating thing. The uh, young yeah. Bathurst. Let's pump the brakes on the metaphor here, yeah. Ethel, yeah. and just let us know what happened. <laughs> like, the wings of justice <laughs> descend upon the table to explain. It's like, just tell us a what the fuck happened. wings. <laughs> I felt everybody could hear the twinkling of a star as though fallen <laughs> to the earth. What? Swift as a thunderbolt, the wings of tragedy swept down upon the little party gathered at the table. Young Bathurst uttered a queer, half-choked exclamation and dived downwards. <laughs> but the man next to him, an Englishman named Norton, dived also. Wait, Norton's and been there the whole Norton. time? Had I known Norton was there the whole time, this would have been very different. Norton. We all know Norton. I would have been doing way more Edward Norton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, Ed Norton plays. Uh, yeah, Ed obviously. Norton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he looks like when he was in American History X. Yeah, he's got to explain that he's British, but he has a big yeah. swastika tattoo yeah. and a shaved head. Very confusing. <laughs> like, I will side with them. 30 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> and it was he who, after a moment, righted himself with something shining in his hand, which he proceeded grimly to display to the whole assembled company. It was a small folding mirror, a little more than a toy it looked, with a pin attached to its leathern back. <gasps> Deliberately, Norton turned it over, examining it in such a way that others might examine it too. Then, having concluded his investigation of this very simple of contrivance. The, sorry, of all the frou frou shit she writes, she goes, he examined it as others would have. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm tapped for insane yeah. similes at this point. You can just say he, he looked, looked at it. it. As he looked at it as one would. way to look at something. <laughs> he was looking with his eyes at the object. The imagine, object. <laughs> imagine you're looking at something. Take yourself, imagine looking at something. Now he's doing that to this. Let me back up. It's 1882. Okay, so let me go earlier. So humans, they crawl out of the muck. They have eyeballs. <laughs> the secret of success, he observed. Everyone present looked at Archie, Shit. who had sunk back in his chair. Shit, Archie. to the lips. Oh, he should have shaved them. Yeah. He seemed to be trying If your lips are white, say, you I'm probably sorry, didn't shave your lips. He shouldn't have shaved them, because then they wouldn't be able to see how white they were. <laughs> he seemed to be trying to say something, but nothing came of it. <laughs> but, 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 but Norton. <laughs> He's, blah. And then quite calmly ending a sentence more more terrible than any tumult? Tumult. Tumult of words. Another voice made itself heard. He 
Even so, Mr. Norton. West bent forward and with the utmost composure. Huh? Possess. I don't know what's going on. What's going to happen, guys? I don't know. Literally <laughs> anything. Literally anything, anything can happen. That's what I love about literature <laughs> is that we're like way into the story and literally anything can happen. It's totally up to Ethel. <laughs> it's like there's like these ideas, right? But like they're on paper. And then like we like read them, but they're like just words. But then when we see them out loud, it's like it's a story. It's we like should say thank fiction. you to Ethel for letting us live in her world for this long. <laughs> Thanks uh, for the invitation, <laughs> Ethel. Bless up, Ethel. It's like it's like a door into her brain has been open. <laughs> blah blah blah. Shining thing upon the table. This is my property. I have been rooking you fellows all the evening. Wait, West? Oh, West is taking the fall for him? Wait, so he's like, I've just been like... Why? I've what? been I've been cheating and losing. <laughs> I know, he's not very good. But now, cause, is he trying to impress Mortimer? Maybe. But, so, but he like uh, seemed to straight up hate her. Yeah. No, no, but you didn't get it. He was playing it cool. I guess, he was but pretending. she's so obnoxious. No, but this she is the thing. She thinks she's her, so fucking cute. Her eyes are wide. Oh, uh, and gray. Yeah, it's bad. And that's, gray. Yeah. that's a sign of a mental disorder. <laughs> <laughs> she like can't focus on you because she's crazy. Mm. Oh, she got fish eyes. <laughs> he proceeded with unvarying coolness to explain himself. It was really done as an experiment, he said. I am not a card sharper by profession, as some of you already know. But in the course of certain investigations not con connected with the matter, I now have in hand, I picked this thing up, and being something of a specialist in certain forms of cheating, I made up my mind to try my hand at this and prove for myself its extreme simplicity. You see how easy it is to swindle, gentlemen, and the danger to which you expose yourselves. There is no necessity for me to explain the trick further. <laughs> what a weird. Uh, the what, instrument speaks for itself. What a, like, um, what a bullshit li yeah. got caught in a lie moment. Like, no, I was just DMing this girl on Instagram to show how easy it is to see a stranger's <laughs> breasts, honey. Like, it feels like so. Oh, me? I wasn't cheating. I was showing off how cheating is bad. And I, like, I thought the best way to demonstrate that would be to cheat, of course. I could explain why I was doing it, but like, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> You see the phone in my hand. You see how I did it. I don't need it. You get it. It is merely a matter of dexterity and keeping it out of sight. <laughs> I, I would add that on to him. Being like, you know what? It's just a matter of dexterity. You know, and anybody, see, like you did it. Basically, you did it. <laughs> he held it up a second time before his amazed audience twisted it this way and that with the air of a conjurer displaying, what, what a mirror. But what magic is this? Oh, It'll steal your soul. Don't look at it. <laughs> I can see myself in it. Why are there two of me? <laughs> he held it up a second time before his amazed audience, blah, 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 attached it finally to the lapel of his coat and rose. As a practical demonstration, it seems to have acted very well, he remarked. Eh, no harm done. If you're all satisfied, so am I. Dude, what? I do not also, know. why did he put the mirror on his shirt? <laughs> that was so weird. Oh it's like, God. right in my lapel I'll there. Put in my lapel. Uh, you know, where mirrors like, go. Like people do. <laughs> Human man. Hey guys, we wanted to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Zola. Dun, 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 dun. That is the sound of wedding bells. And if you didn't know what I was doing, I apologize for not communicating that clearer. Why is that relevant? Zola is a wedding company that will do anything for love. They're reinventing the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. From engagement to wedding and decorating your first home, Zola is there, combining compassionate customer service with modern tools and technology, all in the service of love. So first things first, I recently got engaged. I'm very happy. I will say that planning a wedding is a very stressful thing. Zola is the easiest way to plan your wedding and register. 500,000 couples have used Zola, so join them. Zola takes the stress out of wedding planning. They have free wedding websites, your dream wedding registry, an affordable save the dates and invitations, and easy to use planning tools. You can conveniently manage everything online and in one place. It saves so much time for couples. So you start with a free wedding website. It's so easy, and it seriously just takes minutes to set up. Over 100 beautiful wedding website designs you can choose from. You can fit any style, every type of wedding. If you think that you're too unique, give it a try. You will be very surprised. Also, you can put your Zola registry on your wedding website so guests can get all the details they need 
And they can buy your wedding gift in one convenient and beautiful place. Because let's be real, 90% of the reason why everybody gets married is for A, taxes, B, getting presents from people that you don't usually see, and C, love. Great. So once you get those things straightened out, then you can build your dream registry at Zola. Yay, 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 the gifts. So Zola makes registering for Newlywed Life very easy. Their store has the widest selection of gifts at all different price points. There's something for every different type of guest to give. Also, free shipping and free returns. Price matching. More. Not only that, you can create funds for your honeymoon, future home, new puppy, anything you want, blah, blah, blah. Anything. Plus, you can register for gift cards, too. For things like Delta, Southwest, Hulu, Home Depot, even more. Also, they have the best completion discount, 20% off remaining gifts on your registry starting right after your big day. Listen, as I said before, I'm planning my wedding right now. I've been on Zola's website. It is super easy to navigate. Things that you wouldn't even think of that would be stressful are all right here. So it's not, it's very simple. You can create your website. Your registry, the invites and paper being there, too, is really I really like that. And then planning is just so much easier with Zola. They have customizable checklists. There's a guest list manager, which is like huge. This website is super, super helpful. I really am glad that um, that I found it. It really has made planning the wedding a more fun and exciting thing rather than like, oh, gosh, there's all these like details about the wedding that are just floating in space. And I just have no idea what to tackle first and when. And so I really, really love Zola. So engagement just happened. Super happy. But now you got to start planning the wedding. Do not worry. We are here for you at Public Domain Theater to start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola. Go to Zola.com slash public. Again, that's Z-O-L-A dot com slash public to get your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola. And now back to the show. He collected the notes at his elbow with a single careless sweep of the hand and tossed them into the middle of the table. Then, with a brief collective bow, he turned to go. But Rudd, the first to recover from his amazement, right. sprang impetuously to his feet. One moment, sir. Well, he's from New York. One moment, sir. He said. <laughs> West stopped at once. A cold glint of humor in his eyes. Without oh. a sign of perturb- perturbation, <laughs> perturbation, he faced round, meeting the American's hostile scrutiny calmly, judiciously. God, what is an L-Y word? A gerund? No, that's I-N-G. A- this is an adjective. adverb. 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 <laughs> she fucking sweats the adverb. Yeah. <laughs> is that also like a it. thing of like romance novels? Because I feel like, you know, he kissed it's, her longingly. Yeah. You know, I feel like the... The L-Y it, words are, are a big part yeah, of the Yeah, it's also a sign of like a not very good writer. Right, yeah. 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 I mean, I use them all the time, but. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, not I'll good a writer, <laughs> yeah. I wish to say, said Rudd, on behalf of myself, and I think I may take it, on behalf of these other gentlemen also, that mm-hmm. your action was a most dastardly piece of impatience, impertinence, to give its tamest name. Naturally, we don't expect court manners from one of your profession, but we Whoa. do look for ordinary common honesty. And he's like, fuck you. I come from the land of castles. I <laughs> know court. <laughs> but it seems that we look in vain. You have behaved like a mighty fine skunk, sir. A oh. skunk? You sprayed us with your Whoa. stink, you sir. Don't, uh, <laughs> everyone's, everyone's like, going? everyone's like. No. Everyone's like yeah, I feel like oh. weird if I make a joke straight <laughs> off of this because I'm reading it. Feel so, free. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I feel like everyone's like, Russ, you don't have to keep um, going, going with that joke. We, yeah, like, <laughs> we got it. Well, it's like, and I'm speaking for everyone here, and everyone believes you to be a skunk. A Pepe Le Pew as skunk. As, am I right, everyone? And everyone else believes that skunks are attractive. <laughs> there is a <laughs> veritable white stripe down your back in your bushiness of manner, sir. All right, hey, Rudd, drop the skunk stuff. No, 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 no I'm on a roll, I'm on a roll. <laughs> Uh, and if you don't see that there's any crying need for a very humble apology, you've got about the thickest hide that ever frayed a horse whip. <laughs> Ooh, I, I, picture the re- I picture the rest of the guys at the poker table jumping into each other's arms like a fucking uh, Twitter meme. Oh, oh 
Oh, shots fired. <laughs> also, very obvious that this woman is British and not American. Because yeah. you've it, got about the thickest hide that ever freed a horse whip. I'm going to say that. I'm going to. That's my new cat call. I'm going to be on the stream like, <laughs> oh, damn yeah. girl, you've got about the thickest hide that ever freed a horse whip. <laughs> like, wait, was that a cat I'm call? Like, Am I offended? <laughs> either way, I'm getting pepper sprayed. <laughs> Everyone was standing by the time this elaborate thread was on her. To be fair, that wasn't elaborate. It was elaborate. Thread. It was elaborate. It was long. Very long. <laughs> Too long. And it was quite obvious that Rudd voiced the general opinion, parentheses, not all the skunk stuff, though, close parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> the only one whose face expressed no indignation was Archie Bathurst. Oh, Thank you for using Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> yeah. There's four Archies at the table, so it's a little <laughs> Archie R. Archie 1, Archie, Archie 2. Two. Yeah, it's like in Archie kindergarten. R, Archie 1, Lindsay K, Archie B. Lindsay F. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan G, do you have something you want to say? <laughs> he was leaning against the wall, mopping his forehead with a shaking hand. No one looked at him. All attention was centered upon West, who met it with a calm serenity suggestive of contempt. He showed himself in no hurry to respond to Rudd's indictment, and when he did, it was not exclusively to Rudd that he spoke. I am sorry, he coolly said, that you consider yourselves aggrieved by my experiment. Oh, wow, that is like not how you say apology. apology. That's, that's some Louis like, C.K. apology. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry if you, you were hurt. Were yeah, I'm by... sorry if you didn't like me <laughs> Also, like, off. I'm sorry if you consider yourself offended. <laughs> <laughs> that's even worse. It's like I so... don't even think you are offended. Yeah. But if like... you consider that, then I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that your great admiration for me and my talent <laughs> made you sad that I did this, but... Yeah. <laughs> this is the line you say yeah, that, that you that, think that, that, is going to end yeah. a fight with your partner. <laughs> and then you're like, wait, this just opened up a whole fresh <laughs> wound. <laughs> I do not see myself, I do not myself see in what way I have injured you. However, perhaps, too, however and perhaps, back to back, oh, and? you are the best judges of that. If you consider an apology due to you, I am quite ready to apologize. Whoa. 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 This guy, this this guy, guy is not apologize. such a jerk. is a fucking... If you think I like, should apologize, I'll apologize. This guy yeah. is a fucking artist with a non-apology. Yeah. Like, truly one of the best. West well, is definitely ready to do something Bum, sketchy sure. to yeah. a woman that he has power over in a situation. For sure. With, with his oh, ability. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pumped. For, I'm here for it. I'm, Popcorn I'm half emoji. chaff here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, chaff. Chaff. I'm chaff to the bone, baby. <laughs> His glance rested for a second upon Archie, then slowly swept the entire assembly. There was a scant humility about him, apologized though he might. Rudd returned his look with open disgust. But nice. it was Norton who replied to this <gasps> Norton. defense of Norton's himself. Jumping. Oh my God. Norton! <laughs> and what does Norton say but... It is Bathurst who is the greatest loser, he said, with a glance at that Why young man. Why drag Bathurst in this? Well, because that's what's wondering. If he's yeah. cheating, how is Bathurst winning? Yeah. Who is beginning to recover from his agitation? It was a tomfool trick to play, but it's done. You won't get another opportunity for your experiments on board this boat. So, if Bathurst is satisfied, I should say sooner you apologize and clear out the better. Get off our cousin cruise. <laughs> yeah. You're cousin not a cruise. cousin anymore. <laughs> our moms are not You're sisters. Out of the family. We will confiscate this anyway, declared Rudd, plucking the mirror from West's <gasps> coat. Fair. Oh, I mean, he shouldn't have been wearing it. Fair. He flung it down and ground <gasps> his heel upon it with rude. venomous intention. How dare. Wow. How rude. I, how <laughs> Michelle Tanner. <laughs> I'm a cousin. <laughs> I apologize, he said briefly, oh. singly and collectively, to all concerned in my experiment, especially, he made a slight pause, to Mr. Bathurst, whose run of luck I deeply regret to have curtailed. If Mr. <laughs> Bathurst is satisfied, I will now withdraw. This guy is so good at being a dick. I'm yeah. not even fully no. positive what West did and what his end game is. So in that it's mode, it's just like, to protect Archie. Archie. So he's like, what, he's acting like when the mirror fell is when was, he was like gonna interrupt Archie's like winning streak. streak. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I interrupted your winning streak. I'll get out of here. Well, game's over, fellas. This was good. I'm <laughs> Oops, gonna go fuck your sister. Off. I'm <laughs> gonna go put it on my shoe and look up your sister's skirt upstairs. I <laughs> don't, uh, cousin. Sorry, uh, I don't understand how the mirror is being used 
in such a way that no one else can he's see He's like, it. every time he wants to look at somebody's cards, he, like, lifts his arms up and goes, oh, oh so sweet. And then yeah, he's like, like, on the like, back of his hand. Look. Yeah. Yeah. have to be on, like, somebody else's right? lapel <laughs> reflecting right? their yeah. cards. Yeah, I don't fully what get it. What is the physics of this? Uh, it hadn't been invented yet. You know what? It's, uh, it's romance, so there's no... There's no, no physics involved. Yeah. We don't know where anybody is. He we paused just not again. Want to know where parts fit in parts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all we care about. He paused again, as if to give Bathurst an opportunity to express an opinion. But Archie said nothing. Whatever. <laughs> he was staring. Uh-huh. Down- Nothing, whatever. <laughs> Archie's a millennial. He was staring down upon the table and did not as so much as raise his eyes. West shrugged his shoulders again, ever so slightly, and swung slowly upon his heel. In, de- in a dead... Oh, <laughs> and just kept Whee! spinning and drilled a hole in the boat floor and all the way down to the ocean. By the way, this is a cartoon. <laughs> in a dead silence, he walked away down the saloon. No one spoke till he had gone. Shit. A black, moaning night had succeeded the gray, gusty day. Ooh, the darkness nice, came nice, down nice. upon the sea yeah, like yeah, a yeah, pall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck yes, covering the long fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. swell Cover from that a swell. Oh, heavy swell, yeah, a yeah. A darkness that wrapped close, such a darkness as could be felt through which the spray drove spray. blind. Whoa. Spray, spray, spray. I love it when skies oh, and oceans oh, fuck. Shit, I love that. I love blind spray. They call it the horizon, but I call it where the sky and ocean fucks. <laughs> <laughs> there was a small attraction for passengers on deck, and West grimaced to himself as he emerged from the heated cabins. Yet nice. it was not altogether distasteful to him. He was a man to whom a calm atmosphere meant intolerable stagnation. He was essentially born mm-hmm. to fight his way in the world. He's Whoa. been like not moving. I don't fully understand what this guy gets out of life. Yeah, right? he was. Yeah. He was like. So cool, calm, and collected, and like, I couldn't care less, girl. I don't want to do this. Da, da, da. I'm going to go play cards. I don't care about anything. And all of a sto- sudden, the story is like, he fucking thrived on chaos. Yes. <laughs> Even though he was like, like <laughs> a still yeah, like. He was like a nihilist for <laughs> yeah, the first half yeah. of it. For a while, he paced alone, to and fro, along nice. the deserted deck, his yeah. hands behind him, the inevitable cigarette between his oh, lips. Oh, yeah, baby. Fucking inevitable. Hairless little lips. Oh, that sounds weirder <laughs> when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shouldn't have, just shouldn't have said little. But uh, presently, he paused and stood still close to the companion by yeah. which he had ascended. Oh, shit. It was sheltered here, and he leaned against the woodwork by which Cynthia Mortimer had supported herself that Fuck morning. Fuck, yeah. yeah. He just and wanted to He's touch like, it's basically like we're fucking. I'm touching the spot on the wall where you were laying. Oh, did you ever do that when you were in like elementary school? Is like try to go to the water fountain right after my. After, I almost said her name after my. <laughs> After Margo would, uh, you know, uh, clearly I went to a school full of Jewish people. But, uh, when um, after Margo used the water fountain, I was like, mm, "That's yeah. like kissing." No, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. but I love you it. You eat her food out of the garbage, and you're like, "This is like eating her pussy," and your dad's like, "Knock it off!" <laughs> and you're like, I six. told you I didn't raise her. <laughs> and then you have this is just like eating a pussy. <laughs> I'm eight, and I get it. <laughs> He leaned against the woodwork by which Cynthia Mortimer had supported herself that morning and nice. smoked serenely and meditatively. Oh, fuck. Oh, these L-wise. <laughs> Minutes passed. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. One boring fucking Tell two me words. About it. Minutes, Minutes passed. passed. There, excuse, I'm about to burp. Excuse me. I could have turned away from it the It was mic. such a polite burp. It was very polite. Too polite. You did it before and then you came back for it. I'm about to burp. <laughs> it's like when people like slow down to run a red light. <laughs> like, I'm gonna do it. I'm a good boy, psych. <laughs> there came the sound of hurrying feet upon the stairs behind him and he moved a little to one side, glancing downwards. The light at the head of the companion revealed a man ascending, bareheaded and in evening dress. His what? Mom, bareheaded. What? Oh, I pictured him <laughs> like huge totally shit. <laughs> oh, I was picturing like like monk hair, like like what is it called, like tonsure, uh, where, where they shave like shave only the, the middle. Yeah, you give yourself like, <laughs> shave male pattern baldness. Yeah, into your head. but like back in the day, it just meant he wasn't wearing a hat. Oh, this shit. man is upstairs, sans hat. Beat him senseless, will you? So he's like formal right now, though his clothes yeah. are formal. Very formal. His face upturned, gleamed, gleamed deathly white. Oh, it was shit. the face. Of Archie Bathurst. Fuck. West suddenly Shut squared his shoulders and blocked the opening. Go and get an overcoat, you young fool, he said. <laughs> <laughs> West 
podcast all, all right. of a sudden revealed to be I a fucking I own your ass dork. now. <laughs> <laughs> Put on a coat. <laughs> In oh, West, you seem so cool earlier. Uh, yeah, let's go. How come you're not wearing a turtleneck? Archie, your coat. Archie. <laughs> he he's going to freeze without his coat. <laughs> but Thomas John can't see without his glasses. <laughs> I don't know why that's in my head. Archie gave a great start, stood a second, then, without a word, turned back and disappeared. Wes left his shelter. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I like that interaction. <laughs> hey, Minutes put on a jacket. Passed. Uh, derp. <laughs> Bye. Uh, Wes left his sheltered corner and paced forward across the deck. He came to a stand by the rail, gazing outwards into the restless darkness. There seemed to be the hint of a smile in his intent eyes. Mm -hmm. A few more minutes drifted away. Then there fell a step behind him. A hand touched his arm. Nice. Can I speak to you? Archie asked. Slowly, Wes turned. Wait, so he came back? Wait, so Archie came back. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it where is the girl? doesn't whether he has a coat so, on or not. I'm just picturing him. So he comes down. He's not wearing a hat. He, and no coat. And no coat. And then Wes is like, Go get your coat. And he's like, boop. And, and then West, West then turns West out. Him. And then he just goes, <laughs> like appears behind Like fucking West. Babadook. Yeah, Lindsay's doing storyboards with <laughs> yeah. her hands yeah. to yeah. kind of and explain the like, geography of the boat. <laughs> Wait, so again, is the, is, Isaac's hadn't been invented yet, so we have to figure it out. Is think, his cousin there, the girl cousin? I'm positive that Ethel gets paid by the word because this, this middle <laughs> three paragraphs were just like, and then he came up and I said, go back. And then I walked away <laughs> and then he came back. And it's like, we're right where we were if he just came out. <laughs> All right. Uh, Oh, I speak to you. There seemed to be the hint of a smile in his intent eyes. A few more minutes drifted away. Then there fell a step. Oh, sorry. A hand touched his arm. Can I speak to you? If you have anything of importance to say, he said, Archie <laughs> faced him with a desperate resolution. I want to ask you, I want to know what in thunder you did it for. <laughs> Nice. Oh, are they gonna fuck? I hope so. Oh, I hope they fuck. I want them all to fuck. What? Yeah, in the, yeah. Uh, they're all I'm not uh, like a cousin. big pile yeah. of cousins. I bet yeah. he's a pretty distant cousin from Cynthia. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. It's Is he cool. gonna do that's the cool. thing? You know that thing when you uh, fuck, fuck your cousin a guy <laughs> and while he fucks someone that's related to you, uh -huh. so you can yeah. technically aren't doing anything. You're yeah. Not doing yeah. Incest. It's that. Yeah. It's yeah. That. It's that thing that everyone it's knows that about. It's that thing you do. Okay, when... Now, Joss Whedon has DM'd you fifteen times. <laughs> also, what a bold thing to just pass your phone to a near stranger yeah. and not have it on airplane yeah. mode. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Oh, you could be just like making the, you're just like making up this story while you're just like reading my text. I just that would be I'd be an amazing improviser if I riffed a complicated oh, it, 19th or, century. Like we have gotten to the most boring part and we're like, huh, what happened to the story? And, and you're like, like Whoa, and, boy. You're, and then he walks away again. And then Archie and then, comes back and then he, West and then is he, like, hey, I you mean, forgot gloves, and Archie goes back. And said West, did what? He almost drawled the words as if to give the boy time to control his agitation. Mm. Archie stared at him. Archie stared at him incredulously. You must know what I mean. Haven't an idea. There was just a tinge of contempt this time in his words. <clears throat> what an unconscionable bungler the fellow was. <laughs> oh my god. Exclamation point. But you, you fucking must bungler. But you must, persisted Archie. <laughs> my Margie. Thunder, Blund thunder. Blundering wildly. I suppose you knew what you were doing just now when when I generally know what I am doing. Observe. Nice. Oh, back to being cool. Then why? <laughs> Archie stumbled again and fell silent as if he had hurt himself. <laughs> As ow, why, ow, ow, I pulled my muscle talking. Ow, ow, ow. I have a Charlie horse in my leg. I don't always care to discuss my motives, said West very decidedly. Oh, but it is because I want to fuck your cousin. He's like, well, she told me I could. <laughs> but surely. Archie suddenly pulled up, realizing that by this spasmodic method, he was making no headway. Look here, sir, he said more quietly. You've done a big thing for me tonight, a dashed fine thing. Heaven only knows what you did it for, but I have nothing whatever for you, said West <laughs> shortly. Oh, you okay. make a mistake. But you'll admit I admit nothing. <laughs> he made as if he okay. could turn on his heel, but Archie caught him by the arm. Ooh. 
I know quickly. I'm a cur. I know I'm a cur, he said, and his voice shook a little. I don't wonder you won't speak to me, but there are some things that can't be left unsaid. I'm going down now at once to tell those fellows what actually happened. What? Aren't you, you fucking idiot. sad, Archie, don't do this. Don't do this. I don't even this. understand who's grifting who at this point. I don't even care. I was hoping that someone would get fingered. Where and the no... fuck did Cynthia go, speaking of? Here's uh, the thing. There have been zero fingers up anybody's ass, and I'm yeah, really upset. Yeah, I would die for the two in the Pinkerton one. Yeah, the Pinkerton it hasn't been happening. Yeah. Honestly, disappointed Ethel. Yeah, uh, Ethel more fingering. That's just like the note your editor writes, more fingering, more fingering. in red pen. It's like, stop with the adverbs and more like fingering. fingeringly. <laughs> <laughs> she thrust her finger up his boo hole. Fingeringly. <laughs> then you are going to make a big fool of yourself to no purpose, said West. He stood still, scanning the boy's face with pityless eyes. Archie writhed impotently. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, shit. This sucks for Archie. <laughs> My dick isn't even on. I'm writhing. <laughs> Archie is the fucking saddest sack. <laughs> <laughs> He's like just, doing I the fucking love... worm on the <laughs> deck. <laughs> I can't stand it, he said with vehemence. Oh my I god. I thought I was blackguard enough to let you do it, but no doubt I'm a fool, as you say. I find I can't. You can't help yourself, said West. He planted himself squarely in front of Archie. Listen to this, he said. You know what I am? They said you are a detective, said Archie. <laughs> West nodded. Exactly. And as such, I do whatever suits my purpose without explaining why to the rest of the world. Wow, well, oh, this guy yeah, would he's blossom a in 2018. Right? Yeah, he would, he would, he would. He's like, God help you if you're a black kid trying to go to a pool. Jesus. <laughs> if you are fortunate enough to glean a little advantage from what I do, take it and be quiet about it. Don't hamper me with your acknowledgments. I assure you I have no more concern for your ultimate fate than those fellows below that you've been swindling all all the evening. One thing I will say, though, for your express benefit, you will never make a good, even an indifferently good gambler. Oh and as God. to card sharping, what? you've no talent whatsoever. Huh? He doesn't need to tell him. Give it up. <gasps> Wait, first of all, I never heard the term card sharp, mm -hmm. but we say card shark now, and I wonder if yeah. that's where it came from. I think from. it's probably did originally we, that. I yeah. think it might be card shark. Yeah. Did we, we just like mangle it? Champing at the, uh, champing oh, chomp, at the bit. Oh, champing at the bit versus chomping. Oh. Yeah, we or just how like, everybody um, uses literally the exact opposite of what mm -hmm. it means now <laughs> yeah <laughs> or spit an image spitting image spit an image it used to be spit what? and image meaning like dna and look and now it's spitting what? image oh shit wow yeah. did not I know that the, one uh, etymology of words mm -hmm. wait no that's it's, bugs no, no etymology. 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 etymology yeah etymology, etymology. etymology. etymology is words. words yes uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. his blue eyes looked straight at archie with I a see. stare that was openly super Supercilious. His Super eyes have been Super doing silious? all the yeah, heavy lifting in this story. I don't know what it means either, but I've read that word. Yeah, there's so many. Wait, say it again. Supercilious. Supercilious. Oh fuck! What doesn't? Mean? Yeah, but you've read it so many times. But you don't... I know I've looked at it. And up when you too. read it in a sentence, you're like, "Yeah, I get it." Yeah, and then... yeah, that, that. Openly supercilious. Okay. And Archie stood abashed. Shit. You are aw you, you are awfully good. He stammered at length. West's brief laugh lived in his memory for long after. It held an indescribable sting, what? almost as if the man resented something. Yet the next moment, unexpectedly, he held out his hand. A matter of opinion, he observed dryly. Good night. Remember what I have said to you. Sweet prince. Uh -huh. I shall never forget it, Archie said earnestly. He wrung the extended, extended hand hard, waited an instant, then as West turned from him with that slight character characteristic lift of the shoulders, he moved away and went below. Holy shit, this book. Wait. Is that it? No. Oh, oh God. Thank God. I was, like, I was like, what? What? So then who is the Fuck deceiver? That. I love that there's a pop socket on this phone. It's yeah. really helpful. It's very helpful. Yeah, it's helpful. I'd just like a little talk with you, Mr. West, if I may. Lightly, the audacious voice arrested him. And as it were, against oh, it's his her. will, it's girl cousin. West stood still. Girl cousin. <laughs> she girl was cousin. standing behind him in the morning sunshine, her hair blown what, all about her face. Naked as the day she was <laughs> Her great Born gray me. eyes, yes. wide and daring, <laughs> yes, 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 gaping yes. gray eyes, yes, yes. <laughs> spread eagle eyes, <laughs> <laughs> full of an alert friendliness that could not be ignored. She moved forward with her light, free yes. step and stood beside him. West was smoking as usual. Nice. His expression Fucking was decidedly smoker. surly. Cynthia nice. glanced at him once or twice before she spoke. <laughs> once, twice. <laughs> Okay, I'll chat. Three times a lady. <laughs> <laughs> you mustn't mind what I'm going to ask you, she said at length gently. Now, Mr. West, what was it exactly that happened in the saloon last night? If he tells her 
the entire thing after we've already experienced it. <laughs> I'm so. going to flip out. This is where Wes says, go put your jacket on. <laughs> Surely you'll tell me, me by myself if I promise, honest engine, not to tell again. Why should I tell you, said West in his brief, unfriendly style. Cynthia was undaunted. Because you're a gentleman, she said boldly. Oh, he shrugged his shoulders. Yeah, he hasn't been a gentleman at all. No, he's all been yet. kind of a douchebag this whole time. He shrugged his shoulders. It's just lucky that she's a douchebag, too, but in a <laughs> yeah. lady way. Yeah. I still don't even know who's winning in this whole No, I have no <laughs> idea. I don't know who's swindling who or what or yeah. who's like a hero or a villain. And if I'm being honest, I don't care. We're almost done. Just keep going. Just so keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what reason I have given you to say so. No. She looked at him with a funny little smile. Well, then, I just feel it in my bones. And nothing you do or leave undone will make me believe the contrary. Much obliged to you, said West. His blue eyes were staring straight it's out over the sea. I'm very into blue eyes. She's very into blue eyes. eyes over the sea to the long blue skyline. Oh, nice. Paid per word. He <laughs> seemed too absorbed in what he saw to pay much attention to the girl beside him. But she was not to be shaken off. Mr. West, she began again, breaking in upon his silence. Do you know what they're saying about you today? Haven't an idea. No, she said, and I don't suppose you care either, but I care. It matters a lot to me. Of course he has an idea. <laughs> don't see <Fucking> how. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. No, I don't care. I don't care. I don't, care. I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> West is like fucking Trump in a weird way. He's yeah. like doing whatever he wants and is unaffected by anyone's. And, he's just like, and I'm not no one's baby. holding him accountable for I'm anything. not a baby. I know what they're talking about. I'm not some baby. <laughs> <laughs> don't see how, threw in West. He turned in his abrupt, disconcerting way and gave her a piercing look. She averted her face instantly, but he had caught her unawares. Good heavens, he said. What's the matter? Nothing, she returned with a sort of choked vehemence. There's nothing the matter with me. I'll, only I'm feeling badly about about what I asked you to do yesterday. I'd sooner have lost every dollar I have in the world if I'd only known then then you have to what you did. <laughs> good heavens, <laughs> West said again. He waited a, <laughs> Good heavens, what? spit it out, baby. He waited a little, then looking down at her as she leaned upon the rail with downcast face. He slapped her and said, Pull it together, woman. And she Listen went, up, Oh, I'm so attractive. <laughs> oh, West, oh, wow, beat you me big strong man. She gaped her eyes at him. At length, as she did not raise her head, he addressed her for the first time on his own initiative. Miss Mortimer! She made a slight movement to indicate that she was listening, but she remained gazing down into the green and white of the racing water. Unconsciously, he moved a little nearer to her. Yes. Unconsciously. Oh, what's like, happening? <laughs> help me, help me, help me, help me. Oh, my God. <laughs> there is no occasion for you to feel badly, he said. I had my own reasons for what I did. It doesn't matter much what they were. But let me tell you for your comfort that neither socially nor professionally has it done me any harm. They are all saying, set a thief to catch a thief, she interposed with something like a sob in her voice. They can say what they like. West Tone expressed the most stoical indifference, but she would not be <laughs> comforted. Stoical, stoical indifference. Do you know what else works? Stoic. stoic. Yeah, those are, that's uh, tombstoning that word there. <laughs> if only I hadn't. If only I hadn't asked you to, she murmured. He made his peculiar Who shrugging gesture. Shit. And what did she ask him to do? <laughs> what does Just it matter? Just watch him. <laughs> he did everything. It was fine. Who cares? It's fine. Every, literally everything's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Jesus. I mean, uh, I don't God, even care. Uh, what does it matter? Moreover, what you asked of me was something quite apart from this. It had nothing whatever to do with it. Nothing whatever is such an interesting mm -hmm. turn of phrase. I liked it a lot. <laughs> she <stood> up, <laughs> Nothing whatever. <laughs> it's the old, It's a nihilist. It's ignorance and apathy. Mm -hmm. She stood up sharply at that and faced him with burning eyes. Oh, don't tell me that lie, she exclaimed passionately. I'm not such a child as to be taken in by it. You don't deceive me at all, Mr. West. I know as well as you do better that the man who did the swindling last night was not you. And I'm sick. I'm downright sick. Whenever I think of it, West's expressions changed slightly as he looked at her. He seemed to regard her as a doctor regards the patient for whom he contemplates a change of treatment. What? See what? Here. Yeah. Dang, Again. things are getting hot in here. This is like, like a full 11 word simile to say he looked at her. He looked so, at her and he was like, maybe a clinical trial wasn't the way to go. <laughs> I think we have to do chemo. <laughs> Speculum. See here, <laughs> you are distressing yourself all to no purpose. If you'll promise to keep it a secret, I'll tell you the facts of the case. Fucking yes. Oh, finally. Yes, finally, finally. Give me them facts, Apple. baby. 
Fax me. Cynthia's face changed also. She caught eagerly at the suggestion. <gasps> yes. Yum, 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 she oh, said. yes, yes, yes. She's totally yes. playing him right now. Oh, my God. I promise, of course, and I'm quite trustworthy. <laughs> I believe you You don't are. have to tell someone you're trustworthy. <laughs> yeah, you know who says they're trustworthy? Not um. trustworthy people. <laughs> Liars. I believe you are, he said with a grim smile. Well, the fact of the matter is this. The man we want is on board this ship, but being only a private detective, I don't possess a warrant for his arrest. Therefore, all I can do is keep him in sight, and I can only do that by throwing him as far as possible off the scent. If he takes me for a card sharper, all the better, for he's as slippery as an eel, and I have to play him pretty <laughs> carefully. He ceased. Cynthia's eyes were growing wider and wider. I didn't think it was so possible. So fucking wide. At this yeah. point, she's full-blown anime. She's just yeah. one eyeball. <laughs> she's a Powerpuff girl. <laughs> she's a Cyclops. <laughs> Not Verney on board this ship, she gasped. He nodded. Yes, you wanted him to get away, didn't you? But I think he will this time. He'll probably be arrested directly... Oh, but I don't think he will this time. He'll probably be arrested directly. We reach New York. But it's meantime, I must it's watch her. out. Yeah. Oh, breathed Cynthia. Then, with sudden hope dawning in her eyes, it really was your doing, that trick at the card table last night. West uttered his brief, hard laugh. Ha ha! What do you take me for? She heaved a great sigh of relief. And it wasn't Archie, after all. I'm thankful you told me. I thought, I thought, but it doesn't matter, does it? Tell me, do tell me, Mr. West, drawing very close to him. <laughs> which, which is not, which is Mr. Nat Verney? West seems to hesitate. Oh, do tell me, she begged. I know I'm only, a, I know I'm only a woman. I'm, I'm just a curious little supple <laughs> my brain I know my genitals are on the inside, but I always keep my word. It's only two more days to New York. He looked closely into her eyes and yielded. Oh, shit. I'm trusting you with my reputation, he said. It's the stout, red-faced man called Rudd. Oh, Rudd. Mr. Oh, Rudd. Ruddy complexion. Or what if she's also a detective and she's trying to get the bounty? I, I'm. If something isn't up with her, I'm going to be so upset. I'm starting to think that no one's fucking in this story. <laughs> no, I'm pretty what? pissed that no one's fucking what this story. What was the title of this story again? The, the, the Swindler. Swindler. Uh, <laughs> I was like, the Deceiver. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Dang, you know I wish shit. someone would have fucked in this story. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> you don't say that, man. There followed a short pause while she digested the information. Then, as the previous morning, she suddenly extended her hand. Well, I hate that man anyway, and I believe you're really clever. If you like Mr. West... He's an ex of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rudd, I loved him in... Uh, <laughs> Uh, best man? What was the movie? Uh, friend, boys. Fr friend Boys. Oh, Friend Boys. Uh, What's that movie about adult men trying to become yeah, friends and for a be wedding. in relationships? <laughs> um, uh, uh, the Muppet movie. Which, yeah. I mean, it's every movie with those dudes. Yeah. It's all like, we're in our 40s, but, but our, we're, we're friends. But women are weird, right? <laughs> but you mustn't be seen with me. You know, you've got to remember that I'm a swindler. The girl laughed out loud. It pleased her to feel that this huh, tech, like tech a child. Return man. <laughs> I keep laughing had taken her into his confidence at last. I shall remember, she said lately, and she went away, not only comforted, but gay of heart. By the way, are we supposed to keep passing it? Or no, 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 you're going to finish it. Yeah. It's gonna... Good call. Yeah. yeah, it's only six more pages. <laughs> During the remainder of the voyage, West was treated with extreme coolness by everyone. They all high-fived him oh, and like, kayaked shit. by him. <laughs> <laughs> They're all on like, rollerblades. <laughs> different kind of coolness. <laughs> it did seem to abash him in the least. He came and went in the crowd with the utmost sang Freud, always preoccupied, always self-contained. Cynthia observed him from a distance with admiration. The man had taken her fancy. She was keenly interested in his methods, as well as in his decidedly unusual personality. She observed Rudd also and noted the obvious suspicion with which he regarded West. On the night before their arrival, she saw the latter alone for a moment and whispered to him that Mr. Rudd seemed uneasy, at which information... I'm sorry, at which information West merely laughed sardonically. He was holding a small parcel to which, after a moment, he drew her attention. I was going to ask you to accept this, he said. It's nothing very important, but I should like you to have it. Don't open it before tomorrow. What is it? Asked Cynthia in surprise. A wedding ring. <laughs> he frowned in his abrupt way. It doesn't matter. Like he's so frustrated. Shut by the it. fuck up. God, I, it doesn't matter. Something connected with my profession. I shouldn't Good. give it to you if, you uh. didn't, if I didn't know you were to be trusted. But, but she hesitated a little. Ought I to take it? He raised his shoulders. I shall give it to the captain for you, if you don't, but I would rather give it to you direct. Is it a new hat for Archie? <laughs> In face of this, Cynthia yielded, feeling as if he compelled her. But mayn't I open it? No, Wes' eyes held mayn't. hers for a second. Not till tomorrow, and in, and in case we don't meet again, I'll say goodbye. 
But we shall meet in New York, she urged with a sudden sense of loss, or perhaps in Boston. Oh, my God. Read the room. My father would really like to meet you. He turned her into a drug mule. <laughs> my yeah. dad wants to meet you? Oh, my God. Why? Did... Uh, stage I mean... nine clinger, <laughs> boys. Oh, boy. oh, hey, West, uh, I'll call run. you. <laughs> <laughs> my dad wants to meet you. Oh, in that case, let's keep going. <laughs> Don't think the dad's doing any fingering. <laughs> Much obliged, said West with his grim smile, but I'm not much of a society man, and I don't think I shall find myself in Boston at present. Smart move. Then, yes. <laughs> then I shan't see you again ever. Cynthia's tone Why was she unconsciously this tragic. Her, I know. Till that moment, she had scarcely realized how curiously strong an attraction this man held for oh her. Oh my God. West's that... expression changed. His emotionless blue eyes became suddenly more blue and intense more with blue. a vital fire. I don't buy it. He leaned towards her as well. <laughs> I don't think that's I don't real. Think so. I don't think so. I, don't I think, think he's so. a fucking werewolf or yeah, something. There's something sinister going on. His eyes keep getting bluer. My eyes keep getting wider. And eventually, <laughs> he leaned towards her as one on the verge of vehement speech. Then abruptly, his look went beyond her and he checked himself. Who knows, he said carelessly. Oh, he's always going to mac on her face. Goodbye for the present, anyway. It's been a pleasant voyage. Let's meet on Valentine's Day at the top of the Empire State Building. (laughs) He straightened himself with the words, nodded and turned aside without so much as touching her hand. And Cynthia, glancing round with an instinctive feeling of discomfiture, saw Rudd with another man standing watching them at the end of the passage. It was dark of early morning they reached New York. Most of the passengers decided to remain on board for breakfast, which was served at an early hour in the midst of hubbub and turmoil mm. indescribable. I love ship food. Mm. I had a steak yum, too. Yum, yum, yum. Cynthia with her aunt and Archie, new character, what? partook the of aunt a hurry. Har- yeah, the aunt has been there the whole time. Who would have thought? <laughs> Aunts and cousins? She came oh, to take it them is a cousin It's a cousin cruise. cruise. Oh, cousin cruise. Cousin cruise. I want to take you on a cousin cruise. <laughs> <laughs> ooh wee. Ooh wee, baby. Archie partook of a hurried meal in this thick of the ever-shifting crowd. Out. She looked in vain for West, her gray eyes searching perpetually. We get it. They're gray. They're gray. They're wide. His are blue and piercing. <laughs> on one friend after another came up to bid them goodbye, stood a little talking and presented and presently drifted away. The whole ship from end to end hummed like a hive of bees. Nice. She was glad at length. <laughs> <laughs> That's what bees sound like to you? Yeah. <laughs> Classically. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> she was glad when at I'm length she was able dead. to <laughs> down with bees. Boo, bees. Boobies. Boobies. Uh, <laughs> she was able to escape from the noisy saloon. She had not slept well and her nerves were on edge. The memory uh-huh. of that interrupted conversation with West of the confidence unspoken went with her continually. She had an almost feverish longing to see him once more, even though uh-huh. we were in the heart of the crowd. He is just not that into you. <laughs> yeah, he's ghosting he been, you, girl. Yeah, uh, girl, read the room. Uh-huh. He had been about to tell her something. Of boat. that, she was certain. Uh-huh. She had an intense and almost passionate desire no. to know what it was. No. Surely he would not. He could not go ashore without seeing her again. Oh, she's she had so not stupid. intended to open the packet he had given her till he was ashore herself, but a palpitating curiosity tugged ever open at her resolution packet. till at length <laughs> she couldn't resist it no longer. <laughs> West was nowhere to be seen and she felt she must know more. It was intolerable yes, to yes, be yes. thus left open in it. the dark open through it. the scurrying multitude of departing past. Open the fucking open packet! She, she began to make her way back to her <laughs> okay. cabin. Okay. Her progress was ne- of necessity oh, slow yeah. and once in a crowded okay. corner she was stopped altogether. Okay. Two men were talking clo- together close in her. Yeah. To her. Oh, okay, okay. Backs were towards her. Sure, sure. In the general confusion, they did not observe her futile fine, impatience. Fine, 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 fine. Oh, I knew the fellow was a wrong, and all along were the first words that filtered the girl's oh, God, consciousness okay, as she okay, said, yeah, yeah. But I didn't think he was responsible for that car trick. Sure. I must say, young Bathurst looked so abominable abominably hangdog. It mm-hmm. was the Englishman, Norton, who spoke, and the man who stood with him was mm-hmm. Rudd. Cynthia Wait, Re- this isn't about opening that package anymore. <laughs> wait, yeah, I know. And also, like, like, wait, so they said I knew it was him all along. But Rudd is still there. Yeah, she, he's saying, uh, "I knew it's, it's Archie." West. Oh no, West. Cynthia Wait. realized the near presence of the latter with a sensation of disgust. His drawling tones grated upon her to- intolerably. Wall, he said, it was just that card <laughs> trick that opened my eyes. I shouldn't have noticed him otherwise. I knew that young Bathurst was square. He hasn't the brains to be anything else. Oh, never mind. And when this chap butted in with his thick-ribbed impudence, I guess right then we <laughs> hadn't got ribbed. a beginner to deal with. After that, I watched for a bit, and there were several little things that made me begin to reflect. So the next evening, I got a wireless... 
excuse me, a wireless message off to my partner in New York. And I reckon that oh, did the trick. Brad was the detective. Mm. Oh, no, it was and West. West was the... So she's not even anything? Oh, she's not fucking she, anything. Well, she's a woman in a, mo- in a book. Oh, she's, yeah, she's, she's, she's something. something. She's That's a woman. Yeah, she's a vessel know. for children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's a nine-month apartment for babies. <laughs> so the next evening, I got a wireless message off to my partner in New York, and I reckon that did the trick. When we came up alongside this morning, the vultures were all ready for him. I took them to his cabin myself. There was no fuss at all. He saw it was all up and gave in without a murmur. They were only just in time, though. In another 30 seconds, he would have been off. It was a clever piece of work. I flatter myself to net Mr. Nat Verney so neatly. Mm-hmm. What? Oh! Yeah, this is the fucking Shyamalan ding dong. Yeah, oh, but this is the twist. The Englishman began to laugh, but suddenly broke off short as a girl's face, white and quivering, came between them. Who is this man? The high, breathless voice demanded. Which, which is Mister Nat Verney? Oh shit! Rudd looked down at her through narrowed eyes. He was smiling a small, bitter smile. Wool, wall, Miss Mortimer. I reckon you have the first right to know. She turned from him imperiously you tell me she commanded norton norton looked genuinely uncomfortable and probably in consequence he answered her with a gruffness that sounded brutal it was west he was arrested arrested if you will his (laughs) own fault entirely no one would have suspected him if he hadn't been a fool and given his own show away he wasn't a fool, Cynthia flashback. You fiercely. shut up. You take that back. He was my friend. Literally. <laughs> really? Not, she's not heavy. She's my sister. <laughs> I shouldn't be in too great a hurry to claim that distinction, remarked Rudd. He's about the best known rascal in the two hemispheres. Oh. But Cynthia did not wait to hear him. She had slipped past and was gone. In her own cabin at last, she bolted the door and tore open the package that connected that connect blah, 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 tore open that packet connected with his profession which he had given her the night before it contained a roll of notes to the value of a hundred pounds wrapped <gasps> in a sheet of note paper on which scrawled a single line with apologies from the man who swindled you there was no signature of any sort none was needed when oh, cynthia finally shit. left her cabin an hour later her eyes were bright with that brightness which comes from the shedding of many tears Oh shit! Oh. He gave the money back. Mm-hmm. Omg! He did have a heart. He, he was a behind swindler. those he was piercing Nat blue whatever. eyes. He, he was, was Nat, Nat, Nat boy. Nat totally would. Nat Verney. Nat Verney. <laughs> we got you, buddy. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Wow. I mean, that I wasn't that me. much of a twist. Oh my god, oh, that was the wow. that was the perfect sum up of the entire <laughs> yeah. story. Wow. wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just a teacher who listened to a kid's entire yeah. book report, and you're like, "Well, I can't shatter okay. this kid's spirit." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, well, uh, you certainly completed the assignment. Ethel, no one can say that wasn't a short story. <laughs> <laughs> Could have wow. been shorter. Yeah, Could have been short. It was a medium Me- story. Medium, yeah. medium. We've had worse. We've had. Worse. I yeah. felt good. It felt nice to read that much out loud. I did feel academic and yeah, way. didn't oh, you? Good. I got, good. I, I got bored of reading and I started speeding up towards the end. <laughs> yeah, and I felt like I felt you guys trying to make jokes, and I was like, just let me finish this. Fucking thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it feels that way. Sometimes it feels that way. Yeah, no, I will. Sometimes like, in the middle, race through them. Sometimes because yeah. I'm like, I, well, get Kelly to it, starts man. at the beginning though, and I'm like. I don't. I need more time with the beginning of the story. Otherwise, I don't know what's going on. I'm just racing, man. Mm-hmm. Keep racing, baby. Just keep racing. Never Nothing's stop racing. racing. We could switch. Um, no, I don't mind. I don't mind starting. Okay. okay. Um, thank you so much for coming on and doing the show. Thank you for uh, opening my eyes to new literature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna download all of Ethel's uh, <laughs> magazine articles. Yeah. <laughs> Magazinely articles. Magazinely articles. I'm gonna download it quickly and resolutely. With highly spedly broadbandly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Yeah, if you like podcasts, I do wildly less reading on mine, High and Mighty. <laughs> and then I have a other podcast called Raised by TV with Lauren Lapkus, where we talk about old TV. And then I have a podcast called Action Boys with Ben Rogers and Ryan Stanger, where I talk about movies. I've monetized everything I enjoy in life to the point where I don't enjoy them anymore. That's the way we <laughs> That's survive. The way. Yes. Yes. That's turn your hobbies into jobs, then hate your hobbies. Yes, yeah. <laughs> seriously. I just like literally like, dread doing the things you enjoy yeah. that thing where it's like if you do what you love then you'll never work a day in your life except really it's if you do what you love then you'll always hate what you yeah. love every and what you day love of your life work and remember work sucks <laughs> <laughs> living the dream mm-hmm. uh thank you so much for coming on and doing the show thank you for having me i had a wonderful time oh, as did we wonderful and this is probably the time i should tell you guys 
I'm the swindler. Ah, we've been swandled. Give me my money. <laughs> Give me my money back. Oh no, my mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> when you swindle. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, if you are wondering how can you help the pod, go on to Apple Podcasts and leave a friendly review um, and write a review. That's the thing that helps the most. Um, if you leave an unfriendly review, go fuck yourself. Yeah, go fuck yourself, man. Just be friendly. Just, Just be, be friendly. friendly. How hard is it to be friendly, There's you assholes? There's so much toxicity in the world right toxicity. now. Toxicity. Toxicity. Um, Trust in myself. <laughs> I don't know why this system of a down song got in my head. Isn't it called Toxicity? No. I don't, I don't know if it's it called sounds that. Like it sounds like a song. It sounds like a song. I'm sure it, it is. There's no it up. We'll play it now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Play us out, System of a Down. <laughs> That's how we end all of our podcasts. Weird that you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're a listener. <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? We oh, never know. Thank what... you again for suggesting the story. Yeah. Anonymous listener. Please suggest one yourself. Again, you can go to our Twitter account at uh, Public Domain Pod, and it is pinned to the uh, top of our profile. And we are at Public Domain Pod on all social media, so go ahead and get connected there. Uh, any more biz? No. Great. Keep it lit. Forever <laughs> Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Brett Boehm. Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever